It's reasonable to say that um, the last two years have been impossible. Not only impossible for uh, arts organizations, but for artists and community members. And so we had to make some real big decisions about how to both stay safe and support the people who depend on our work for their livelihood. And so part of that work was trying to then imagine are there ways in which we could use our spaces and our resources so that instead of doing a thing that is outward facing, which we couldn't do, we could start to then fortify the artistic community. Retreat was the first space that we decided to activate. But we also decided that instead of having a traditional employment model, that we would instead identify entrepreneurs who were interested in growing their businesses. What that did was it, it pivoted Rebuild from a, a place that had a lot of employees to um, an organization that was actively believing in emerging entrepreneurs and giving them platforms where they could do their best work. The residency has helped Monday Coffee because we are now able to connect with people in a more you know, definite time frame. People can come into the space and exist with us. It's inspiring to be in residence alongside other people like Jazzer and Tim from Poor Souls. There's always something new that's going on and that's changing within the space or just within our business. We're all learning from each other. As that work was growing, I asked Prada, uh, would it be possible for you to support young creatives and help me create a pipeline from folk who are interested in fashion, architecture, design, the arts, but in a much broader way than the art market? Could we find a way to then um, invest in emerging practitioners and then create a pipeline so that they would have new opportunities, possibly through the Prada Foundation or the Prada Corporation, but maybe also just in that world of fashion and design. And so we started a program called the Experimental Design Lab, where we would be part um, uh, funding uh, emerging artists and offering an award, and then part creating a network and a cohort of young designers and artists. One of the projects that I'm really proud of is this work that we did with a brother named Brandon Bros. Brandon approached uh, me and Rebuild and said, you know, I really want to celebrate everyday heroes and sheroes in our community. And it felt so aligned with the work that Rebuild does that it was like, oh yeah, we would love to commission you to do that work. It was kind of a Black History Month focus, but it was really kind of not about that. It was about Brandon uh, taking these relationships that he had or relationships that he wanted to have and being able to amplify great people who were doing things in our community. So toward a common cause, which was uh, an exhibition sponsored by the MacArthur Foundation celebrating their MacArthur Fellows, uh, it made total sense that we would partner with these area Chicago-based institutions and amplify the work of many artists. And so at, at the Arts Bank, we were proud to have work by Whitfield Lovell, Fred Wilson, Dawood Bey, Carrie James Marshall, Carrie Mae Weems. But it, it definitely felt like this exhibition toward a common cause created a heightened understanding of the way that the Arts Bank and Rebuild's buildings could serve as an important vessel for celebrating black artists and artists of color. The idea that we've lost so many of our important music uh, venues and uh, cultural institutions on the South Side, it really saddens me. And I think if there was any personal agenda that I have, it's to kind of restore the black spaces that existed where we made genius things happen. Part of what we're trying to do is make space for musicians so that they can stay home longer 
and uh, I'm really proud of the work that we've been doing with the AACM, with Brother Ernest Dawkins, um, with uh, International Anthem, with Ben Lamar Gay, uh, Maggie Brown, uh, the daughter of Oscar Brown Jr. There are just so many people who um, have chosen uh, our spaces to practice and um, share their craft. One of the most important projects that I think we did of 2021 was we opened the Kenwood Gardens. And Kenwood Gardens was essentially a kind of brownfield site. There was a lot of remediation work that needed to be done on the space. Um, the community could feel that it was a place of healing and restoration. And it went from like a very modest project to something that felt yeah, much bigger than I could have anticipated because we, we absolutely need places where there's no program and no agenda. There's just beauty. There's just flowers. There's just life growing. There's a place where you can be contemplative. And, and I feel like Kenwood Gardens is one of these rare gems on the south side where you can go and do nothing and be at peace. St. Lawrence is kind of cornerstone to the future work of Rebuild. It, it will easily be the largest artist workspace in, our, in, in the community on the south side. And we're really proud of it because it took a building that was going to be torn down, a very impressive building. And not only has it restored it so that the building itself is intact, which means the architectural imprint of our neighborhood remains intact, but the, the repurposing of that building is for a use that will celebrate many artists, which means that if an artist has a place where they can work, they're more likely to stay in the neighborhood where they're working, which means that the, the community that we hope to build and that we've been active in building, that we have several more amenities that would keep black people in black space longer. And so I'm really proud and, and, and thankful for the support that we've gotten from the philanthropic community, private individuals. Um, the city of Chicago has been very supportive of this project through Neighborhood Opportunity Fund resources. And I just feel grateful for that. I, I can't begin to express the thankfulness that I have for the people who have invested in Rebuild. But what it's meant is that at a time of tremendous hardship and trepidation, um, there were organizations and individuals who saw the important work of Rebuild and wanted to get behind that work. And I, I couldn't be more thankful for the support that we've gotten.